geopolymers are um, an inorganic polymer. Um, chemically, that's a polysilate. Uh, the chemical formula is uh, written as a ceramic engineer writes. Uh, one mole of uh, a group one element, soda, potassia, cesia, or lithia, and uh, one mole of alumina, and four moles of silica, and uh, say 11 moles of uh, water. But this is a standard composition that we use for, uh, to try and keep it as simple and pure as possible. A definition would be it's, a, it's an inorganic aluminosilicate polymer with charge balancing group one cations. It's a rigid uh, gel which is amorphous and acid resistant and it has a variety of other potentially really useful properties. It's a new material and its potential hasn't been fully explored yet. The components for making geopolymers come from um, <clears throat> a powder and a liquid and the powder is uh, a clay metakaolin. Clays are a, 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 like for example kaolinite is two silica, one alumina and some water. When you heat the kaolinite clay to 700 degrees C for an hour or two you remove the water and you are left with a composition of um, two silica to one alumina. So this is a powder. Um, the, the liquid phase is, is often called water glass and it's composed of uh, two silica and one sodium oxide, potassium and cesium hydroxide. So you take the liquid which is called water glass and you take the dehydrated clay and you mix it up into a paste. And uh, this paste is then poured into a mould and, and say covered with glad wrap so the water doesn't escape and you can leave it at room temperature for 24 hours or at uh, say 50 degrees C for 12 hours and it will cross polymerize and set. Um, there are three stages in the curing of geopolymer. It's a uh, dissolution uh, of the clay, uh, polycondensation and precipitation. So it can be made relatively easily at room temperature and it looks like a ceramic uh, but it's, it's, it's not crystalline. It's like little splats or little pancakes that just precipitate out and stick to each other and it's a, it's a rigid, looks like a ceramic, feels like a ceramic but it wasn't fired at, at high temperature. One potential application is a solution to global warming because it could be used as an alternative to Portland cement. Uh, at the moment with the emerging countries like China and India all uh, would like to build more and more infrastructure uh, actually the cement companies can't keep pace with the production of cement and to produce one tonne of Portland cement it liberates 0.95 tons of CO2. Geopolymer composites and geopolymer cements, it only liberates 0.2 uh, tons of CO2, like 20%. Um, instead of metakaolin, that's the pure nice mineral, you can use waste products like fly ash, which is a byproduct of coal mining plants, and slag which is heavy duty product from steel making plants and a variety of minerals so instead we're running out of big holes in the ground to deposit all this waste material we could recycle it and um, make it into structural um, usefully structural materials uh, another potential uh, source material is municipal waste that has been burnt in a plasma oven and that has enough silicates in there to be used. Uh, there's also basalt, basalt that can be burnt
Geopolymers are twice as strong as cements in compression, three times as strong in flexure, and they can set to full strength in one day, versus Portland cement takes about 28 days to set. It's a sort of a super duper glue. You can reinforce it, and uh, it sort of sticks the reinforcements together. So, um, like for example, uh, you know the American Ceramic Society has this mug drop competition, yeah. uh, where you get a ceramic mug and yeah. you drop it from one foot and two foot and three foot. I think the record was seven foot. Uh, a ceramic that's properly fired in the normal way. But uh, we uh, made a, a mug out of geopolymer mm. that was reinforced with graphite weave, you know. Mm. So there was a polymer paste and weave and paste and weave. And we made a mug with a handle according to the rules and it had that many, you know, uh, that many half pints of beer in it and it fulfilled all the rules. <laughs> And we went to the fifth floor and drew, you know, threw it over the balcony and it just kept bouncing. You know? Well, there are potential other applications. Uh, for example, in some applications to replace plastics, uh, you know, with the oil becoming less and less uh, in the earth, um, inorganic polymers could be a way to go. Another major application is fire resistance. If you take carbon, uh, a cardboard, you know, a cardboard packing box, and you smear geopolymer over it, and then you oxy weld the side that's got the geopolymer on it, it won't burn, you know. And uh, we've made a little model house out of plywood, and we've coated it with geopolymer, and oxy welded it, and it wouldn't burn at all. So it's very good in fire resistance. Uh, it, it, it won't burn. It's very thermally insulating, uh, thermal shock resistant. Uh, refractory adhesives, they can stick to metal. So we put it on rebars and coated it and uh, mounted the rebar in a cement uh, form and then conducted accelerated corrosion testing. And it, it is very low corrosion uh, compared to normal corrosion. One of them that sticks to, like glass, it sticks to wood. You can put masonry colouring into it and smear it on wood, and so uh, you, that's your paint for the, you know, you don't, how often do you have to paint a ceramic? Instead of painting bridges with lead paint, lead-based paint, you just smear geopolymers on it and it'll stick. Geopolymers stick to geopolymers very well, so if a bit flakes off, then uh, you, you can um, you know just put some more on it'll stick very well uh, this more at this conference there was a person talking about geopolymers uh, as catalysts modified geopolymers as as for catalyst supports for uh, purifying like water or removing CO2 gases or uh, ammonia gases or no NOx gases from the atmosphere. So, uh, we'll have to look under what conditions uh, this catalytic support is going to work. Uh, room temperature versus at higher temperature it's more efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just work starting. Um, water filtration. We can make porous geopolymers and um, and thermal insulation, again, porous geopolymers. We've, we've made some sort of filters uh, and we took soil uh, water and we put it on the filter and all the soil was filtered out uh, and just came out clear water out the bottom. Hmm. But we'll have to see, uh, you know, uh, bacteria are larger than viruses. So, um, well, how can we play with the microstructure and what can we filter out to clean water. Silver kills bacteria so you can um, decorate the surfaces of the porous geopolymer with bacteria. Uh, also uh, another professor at Illinois has uh, developed an organic coating and if when we make a porous geopolymers we can coat the walls with this organic and that will uh, sequester uh, CO2 
So it's a relatively uh, cheap material and um, to, to make big plugs for those coal plants. There's a geopolymer institute that's uh, headed by Dr. Joseph Davidovitz and uh, it's www.geopolymer.org <laughs> and uh, so they're tackling a problem how to how to produce 100 million tonnes of geopolymer for roads in China. China would like to build roads in the next X years. Where do even the ingredients come from? Well, meanwhile in Australia, that's a, in Australia, um, there's a big set, hot bed of research uh, at, the, at uh, Melbourne, in Melbourne, and there's a company called Zeobond and Curtin University, the Australians are very sensitive to uh, sustainable industries and global warming and uh, they've been making railway sleepers or what you call railway ties out of geopolymers across the Nullarbor Plain and um, sewage, pi uh, sewage pipes because uh, geopolymers are much much more acid resistant than cement and so the uraic acid in the sewage uh, eats away at the sewage pipes but the geopolymer pipes uh, can outlast them by many fold. The Air Force is very interested in this. Uh, they Actually they supported all our work and we're very grateful uh, <laughs> but um, there was one two-star general that uh, was um, you know, defending the research that the Air Force is doing and sometimes they think it's too basic science and too, um, you know, far-reaching and he said, oh, uh, and he said, oh no, we also do useful things like make this geopolymer composite reinforced that can catch shrapnel and uh, so that's uh, one possible uh, use for it. Uh, it, uh, it, it, it it's pretty versatile material. And the other thing is the compo you can put in composites like for, uh, you know, yeah, bamboo shoots and uh, 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 bamboo sticks chopped up or um, any reinforcement you, you want, you know, you can uh, usually encapsulate in there. Uh, speaking of encapsulation, in Australia from Many years now, uh, they've been conducting research for encapsulating lo low-level radioactive waste with geopolymer, and it works just fine. Mm. Uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, so low-level, the, the high-level radioactive waste should go in the Synrock. It's a mineral that's been developed in Australia. It's be much better than the glass that um, only lasts X thousand years. Um, but for low-level radioactive waste and, and also waste encapsulation in general, geopolymers are just the shot, you know. Potential uh, fuel cells instead of out of uh, organic PEMs uh, make them, and s solar cell substrates instead of silicon wafers use uh, geopolymer substrates. Um, so there are potential high-tech applications and that's why we're doing the material science of it, to understand it and understand its limitations and look for potential applications. It's, it's cheaper and more user-friendly. You don't have to fire it, you don't have to have a kiln with a high BTU to get to the high temperatures. This global warming problem is becoming serious and if you uh, want to think carefully about it, we ought to do something about it. And uh, this is a, a, a solution. I think one of the problems is get, getting past the standards. Civil engineering people have these standards and they don't really care about the science, just whether it meets the standards. And uh, so uh, in the past, the standards have been composition based. This is the recipe for Portland cement with a bit of leeway here and there. But uh, nowadays, um, th hopefully when we get standards that are performance based, um, w uh, geopolymers will easily outperform uh, cements and that might be one way to get around it. Geopolymers, <laughs> remember that.